Hey guys, Happy New Year 2022 to all of you. I wish for you more success and greater triumphs in whatever you want to achieve in the coming year, be it more wealth, greater success in business, new sales peak for the personal growth, whatever. And to get you there to all of these new milestones, for today's video, I want to share with you some of the most useful inspirations you know, successful people habits, stuff that really makes sense to up-level your life. So let's get into it, shall we? The first is simplify. I know you all know that I love myself a simple life, finding joy in a good cup of tea and all that. But that's not really what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about reducing your decision-making load, you know, so you make more quality decisions. Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Barack Obama, all the successful guys, they do this. There's probably something in there for you too. What I mean is, this snowballing advent of technology plus mass consumerism has become this deluge that's complicated all areas of our life. You know, what we wear each day, which coffee we drink, what cereal we buy, each and every one of these consumption decisions has become so exhausting because we have so many choices these days and it's no longer simply just about price, is it? It's also about whether the food is organic and healthier even though it's more expensive. It's about whether the cotton use originates from Xinjiang and if you're indirectly supporting human rights abuses if you buy this shirt. It's about whether that face cream was tested on animals because you really like them furry creatures and you want to protect them. But unfortunately, our brains aren't limitless playgrounds. All that information overload and option weighing often results in decision fatigue, not just regarding the consumption item itself, but also overflowing into other parts of your life and reducing your cognitive ability overall. Making lots of small decisions like what to wear and what to eat throughout the day can drain your mental energy for when you need to make more important decisions. This is why Steve Jobs is so famous for his black turtleneck work uniform, Mark Zuckerberg for his grey t-shirt combo, Barack Obama and his grey or blue pantsuits. Obama straight out said, I'm trying to pare down decisions. I don't want to make decisions about what I'm eating or wearing because I have too many other decisions to make. So cut out the consumerism noise, simplify your lives, Make better decisions about the real important stuff. The second is valuing yourself. There's the really obvious part to this, stuff like not neglecting yourself, looking after your own well-being, setting aside time for self-care, etc. After all, an empty lantern provides no light. But you can go one step further. One big challenge we all face is that we can never have enough time. Time is a limited and precious resource and we're all busy as heck chasing our epic life and the money to fuel all that. But what if you can reclaim more of your time by simply valuing it and then only doing things that are worth its value and then outsourcing the rest? It's a simple concept really. Let's say if you evaluated all of your work and income streams and projects right now and you figured out that your time is currently actually worth say about $50 an hour. Any task on your to-do list that you could then get someone else to do for you for less than $50 an hour could be outsourced, thereby clearing your plate to pursue more projects that are actually profitable for you in relation to your time investment. Stuff like laundry, picking up groceries, and cleaning the house are obvious things that come immediately to mind. But this could also impact your business and work practices. If you suck at marketing, or perhaps you're really slow at social media, and your time can be better spent developing another part of the business whilst someone else does this bit for you faster and cheaper than your time rate, outsource it. It only makes sense. Third is surrounding yourself with people who elevate you, whether in terms of mood or skills or life visions. You may have heard that we as humans are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. Studies on the breadth of social influence actually suggest that things go far further than that. 
Research has been done on high performers as well as toxic co-workers at well-known tech firms and their spillover effects on the co-workers around them. Statistics show that proximity to a high performer actually boosted the performance of all those within a 25-foot radius around them. Conversely, proximity to a toxic co-worker had a negative effect on everybody in their environment, far beyond just the 25-foot radius. Proximity is power. The people you spend the most time with have a huge influence on your moods, on how you view the world, and the expectations you have of yourself. It's common for us to underestimate the importance of the company we keep. We let our social circles form itself depending on proximity or chance or just how it always has been. But actually, that could end up holding you down in life. We need people, whether they're colleagues, friends, family or mentors, who challenge us and push us to be better. Oftentimes, we ourselves don't even know what we are capable of until we see others achieve. Fourth, dare to dream. It's never going to be easy, but especially in today's world, there is little that's literally impossible. Owing to so many opportunities being brought about by the advent of technology and through new economies emerging. All of that is useless, however, if your first thought is, I won't be able to do this, or I can't. A 2017 survey from Fidelity Investments found that 88% of millionaires are self-made. In 2019, market research analyzing the world's ultra-wealthy showed that nearly 68% of the world's richest, note, not just millionaires, richest, <laughs> are actually self-made. Clearly, the majority of the currently rich people in our world got there by themselves. <laughs> What I think these stats also show is that if wealth is what you're after, it's imminently possible. All of these other people did it. They didn't just sit around saying, oh, I probably can't. As Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. Again, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And the world being the unfair place that it is, it's always going to be harder for some than others. But I think that if your mindset is stuck at, I probably can't then you're going to be stuck at nothing forever. And that's just a non-starter. The fifth is a corollary to the fourth, but it's absolutely important that the two are intertwined and happen together. And that is, take a small step forward each day. Daring to dream big, whatever that dream may be, and then taking small steps each day towards that. So often we convince ourselves that the massive success of others stemmed from some earth-shattering change they made. But that's really just a myth. We underestimate the power of making small improvements day after day for a long period of time. But that's another mistake. Success is more often the end product of daily habits and consistent efforts, not once-in-a-lifetime transformations. Whether it's building a business, becoming an artist, designing a new product, or whatever, if you can get just 1% better each day at whatever you're doing, compounded over a year, you get 3,800% better each year. This is the power of compounded change. Conversely, applying the same math the other way, if you allow yourself to get 1% worse each day, compounded, it means you lose 97% of your value each year. So it doesn't matter how successful or unsuccessful you are right now. Take a small step forwards towards your goals each day, and you might just be so surprised at where you end up. And this last one is actually just from me and my own personal experience in the last many years. And that is to be kind, to do the right thing, and to trust that everything will be as they should. We live in such challenging times, a time of climate change and a world pandemic happening against the backdrop of so many difficulties. Stuff like the collapse of countries like Afghanistan and Myanmar, the refugee migration across Europe and other continents, human rights violations and crises in so many parts of the world. More than ever before, all these events cause each of us to feel that sense of scarcity in everything, 
money, food, water, living space. But it is precisely because current circumstances are so difficult that more than before, it is important to remember to be kind and to share and to give whenever we can, perhaps without an expectation of compensation or return, and to trust that everything will be as they should be eventually. Give and move on and have a blessed life. It is a wonderful blessing to be in a position to give in the first place. So for now, folks, that is all. By putting these six little inspirations, six thoughts of mine out there on the 1st of January this year, 2022, I hope that this action will bring about positive changes in at least some of your lives out there. Or perhaps maybe just give you a little bit of food for thought to chew over regarding the unfolding of this new year and the start of your pursuits for your dream life. What are some other inspirational thoughts you might have for 2022 that you want to share with us? Perhaps your goals for 2022 or nifty useful habits that we can all benefit from? Whatever it is, share with us in the comments below. If this video resonated with you, do hit that like button because that simple like really helps to tell the YouTube algorithm to start circulating this message out there to other people like you who may find it helpful. Consider subscribing if you like what we do and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any videos. Have a wonderful and blessed 2022 with all success. Much love from us here in Bali. Bye!